Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting, and welcome to our channel today. I appreciate y'all being here. And if you're new to the channel, uh, welcome. It's good to have you. And our topic for y'all today is how to revive a dying gym business. How to revive a dying gym business. Now, before we get into our topic today, just a quick reminder, you know, my focus, my mission here in the channel is I want to be able to provide as much information as I can, you know, to as many people as I can across the globe. And the best way I can do that is when you choose to subscribe to the channel. So if you've not yet done so, take a moment, please hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. And then to learn more about me, uh, learn more about my company and how we can help take your business to that next level, you know, be sure to check out those links below. And for you folks that are looking to open a new gym, you need financing, uh, you have an existing operation, you need working capital, you know, we can help with funding up to $400,000 in funding. It's completely unsecured and there's no restrictions on use. You can use it any way you want. Uh, minimum requirements 680 or better on credit scores higher the better but 680 or better uh, minimum income of 50,000 per year so if you need funding you know check us out you know check the links below financing and funding uh, several different options for you on that you know to match you know your particular situation but be sure to check that one out and so with that said let's get into our topic it's how to revive a dying gym business I want to give you some thoughts on this so you guys that, that, that you have a gym and you now it's not working like it needs to. Let's look at some things that you can do to change that. So number one, restructure. Restructure. Now, here's at, at its core, here's what I mean. You want to simplify the oper operation. Not choke it off. There's a big difference between simplifying it and choking it off. But one of the things that I find to be true with a lot of clubs that, that need that turnaround, one of the problems they have so often is the businesses become too complicated. Okay, Because one of the things to think about, whoever that sales manager is, whoever that person in charge is, maybe it's you, Okay, whoever it is, what the philosophy I like to use there is I want to take as much off their back as possible to allow them to focus on sales. Because sales, this is the oxygen for your business. And if that key person who's in charge of that is focusing on other things because the operation has gotten too complex, you know, not driving sales, you can stop right there. It's not going to work, okay? You have to have the sales. You have to have the oxygen to your business. So restructure. Look at simplifying the operation. Again, not choking it, okay? And whoever's in charge you know, from a sales standpoint or just in general, we want to take as much off their back as possible. Maybe this is you. We want to take as much off their back as possible to allow them to focus on sales. Okay. Because nothing happens unless somebody sells something. Okay. Particularly if you're in a business that's dying. Um, number two, you want to get a cash flow injection. And so, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, financing possibilities, check out the links below. Look at that. You're going to need that. Or if you have personal funds you want to put into it or personal credit you want to put into it or investors you want to put into it, you need to look at that. It's going to be part of a turnaround. Unless, the only time that wouldn't be true is if your cash flow is high enough, your revenue is high enough, you can float some of this. Because here's the thing you want to remember. Yeah, we're going to look at things to, we need to cut and do different things. But in terms of growing your business, you're never going to cut your way into growth not going to happen. You're not going to cut your way into growth. We might make some cuts to kind of stabilize the business, get us in a positive sense, but you are going to need a cash flow uh, infusion. So look at financing. You can look at personal funds if you want. Uh, you know, you can cash out, you know, 401ks, whatever you like on that. You can go out and get an investor. Normally, I like the idea of getting getting a loan on it and you know let the bank you know do that for you. Uh, usually, it's a little bit simpler, but you're going to need it. And just remember, you're not going to cut your way into growth. Okay, we can cut, we can start getting positive in the bank account, and we can stabilize the business. But now we need to grow it. Okay, and by and large, that's going to mean you know more better trained staff. It's going to mean more marketing, more promotions, things of that nature. Uh, number three, we want to reduce waste and overhead. Reduce waste and overhead. And so take a look at everything. Okay. You know, people that aren't performing, you know, hard decisions have to be made. Programs that aren't profitable, you're going to have to cut them. 
Okay. The other thing I would suggest you do is do a complete inventory, you know, of your business. What do you have that it's just sitting there? I mean, I remember walking into a club one time and we were doing this and they must have had 50 ceiling fans stored in the back because they were going to put in ceiling fans, which they did, but these were the wrong ones and they just never returned them or whatever happened. And there they were. And there was a lot of money wrapped up in that. And so there's a great way to, you know, pull some cash out of things that are maybe sitting in storage or even a better control cost. I walked into one club one time, opened the closet and they had enough office supplies in there to open up their own store. Okay. So they're clearly overspending and really weren't watching it. So you want to reduce waste and overhead, make sure we are really on top of that. Um, number four, and this is just kind of a harsh reality of a, a turnaround and, 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 and trying to revive a dying business is you only keep the best employees. You need the ones that are producing. Okay. You, you can't, there's really no other option on this. And maybe you can, you know, reassign, you know, some folks might not want to go through a, uh, a turnaround or a restructure and they might leave. And so you can reassign some folks, but you only want to keep the best employees. You know, if you're trying to revive a dying business, you really can't do it with non-productive people and make sure you know your numbers, make sure you're really looking at this. So you really understand, um, number five on how to revive a dying gym business. We need better strategic planning. We need better strategic planning. And so some of this, okay, it's one of the things that, that I will do when I first get involved in any kind of an operation that maybe it's not meeting its numbers is we'll want to do a review of existing assets. You know, we'll look at your website. Is that website a, an online brochure or is it a lead generator? Is it a sales tool? Okay. Um, you know, what's, do we have a telephone inquiry script? Do we have a script for follow-up? Do we have a, a proven defined sales process? Do we have a, uh, a proven defined, you know, presentation sheet? Um, do we have a, a second sale process, a third sale process, a referral presentation? You know, do we have all of that? Those are existing things that probably all of you are doing, you know, are we, are we maximizing each one of them? You know, how about our marketing? Uh, you know, do we have, you know, good strategic marketing? Are we really capturing the entire community? And part of it's paid, you know, part of it's going to be digital marketing. Part of it's going to be, you know, pay-per-click like with Google is going to be a common thing you're going to want to do. But, you know, joint venture marketing with of hair salons where, you know, you do email swaps or blog swaps, uh, juicers, cryotherapy clinics, uh, you know, places like Sprouts, Whole Foods, those kind of, those kind of places. But you, we need to have better strategic planning because, you know, one of the, one of the common denominators is not the only thing, but one of the, one of the, the things that I see frequently for, for gyms that are dying, that are struggling, it's really a failure to properly understand and implement sales and marketing. You can have the nicest place on the planet, but if no one knows you're there, no one's walking in that front door, it's not going to matter. And then when they do walk in, you want to make sure you have a process that's going to help you convert, you know, the majority of those folks that come in. And then number six on reviving a dying gym business. And this goes with a lot of things. This goes, you know, if the gym is dying or Hey, if you're someone who's just getting started, surround yourself with people that have been there and know how to do this. Take advantage of turnaround professionals. I know, you know, we do this for a lot, a lot of companies. Um, you know, your accountant might do it. Your attorney might do it, but, Find someone that's been there, that's walked down that path and knows how to do it. You're not trying to trial and error this thing. You want to have proven programs, you know, proven things that, you know, the likelihood of working are very high, but surround yourself with people that have done it. Because if you're really trying to get this turned around, it can be, uh, it can be a stressful time and we don't want that stress to feed into our customer or feed into our staff if, you know, we're the one that's kind of conducting this. So, you know, six different thoughts on how to revive a dying gym business. Here's the really good news. From where I sit, you've got the greatest product on planet earth. You know, everybody wants to look better. Everybody wants to feel better. You know, everybody wants to live longer. Okay. And it's our job to break down those barriers, offer enough differentiation, you know, to get people to come in and have our processes in place and be tight on this. Okay. So take a look at this. If you're someone that's struggling, take a look at this. Let's get this turned around. If you need help, you know, feel free to reach out to me. You can check out the links below uh, for more information on that. 
So, folks, again, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting. Appreciate you being here at the channel today. And again, if you've not yet done so, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. And then again, to learn more about me, learn more about my company and how we can turn your business around, or if you're brand new, help you get started on the right track, you know, check out those links below. And for you folks that are looking to open a new gym, you need financing, you have an existing operation, you need working capital, you know, we can provide funding. Uh, it's unsecured funding, no restrictions on use. Minimum credit score of 680 in each credit bureau. Minimum income, 50000 per year. So again, my name is Jim Thomas. I appreciate you being here today, and we look forward to seeing you all in that next video.